One of the hardest lessons in life is letting go. Whether it's guilt, anger, love, loss or betrayal, change is never easy. We fight to hold on and we fight to let go. Presenting the Address by Marga Mingo. Marga Minko grew up in a family of five in Breda. Unlike her sister, brother and parents, she went into hiding during World War II. In 1957, she made her debut as a writer with Bitter Herbs, the laconic and devastating story of a young girl who escapes through a back door when her family is arrested and ultimately discovers that she has lost everyone close to her. The book was a great success at home and abroad, with over 4 lakh copies sold in the Netherlands alone. New work followed at irregular intervals. The Other Side, 1959, An Empty House, 1966, The Fall, 1983 and The Glass Bridge 1986. In 2004, she published Interference, a collection of stories. The following year, Marga Minko was awarded the prestigious Constantin Huygens Prize for her entire over. In 2018, Minko won the PC Hoft Prize, one of the most important Dutch literary awards. The jury praised her as the author of a modest and intensely powerful body of work. Without psychologizing, without resorting to pathos or pretension, she enables us to understand and fully engage with an inconceivable reality. That means she engages the readers to understand unbelievable real-life situations. The author Marga Minko's The Address. Now students, let me give you a brief about the impact of World War II. September 1st, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland, led Britain and France to declare war on Hitler's Nazi state in retaliation. Second World War was a conflict that involved every part of the world during the years 1939 to 45. And we all know how devastation affected the whole world. The principal belligerents were the Axis powers, Germany, Italy, and Japan, and the allies, France, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, and the United States we joined later and it proved even more devastating. Rising to power in an economically and politically unstable Germany, Adolf Hitler, we all are aware of Adolf Hitler and his National Socialist Nazi Party, rearmed the nation and signed strategic treaties with Italy and Japan to further his ambitions of world domination. World War II was the deadliest military conflict in history in terms of total number of deaths with some 75 million people casualties including military and civilians or around 3% of the world's population at that time. Many civilians died because of deliberate genocide, massacres, mass bombings, disease and starvation. These were such violent effects of World War II. Now, the Holocaust and the survivors. To the Nazi leader Adolf Hitler, Jews were an inferior race. He considered Jewish people to be inferior. So he uh, could not, he did not allow, I mean, those who were Jews, they were suffering from racial discrimination. 
An alien threat to German racial purity and community, these Jews were. After years of Nazi rule in Germany, during which Jews are consistently persecuted, Hitler's final solution now, known as the Holocaust, came to fruition under the cover of World War II with mass killing centers constructed in the concentration camps of occupied Poland. Approximately 6 million Jews and some 5 million others were targeted for racial, political, ideological and behavioral reasons. They died in the Holocaust. More than 1 million of those who perished were children. The word Holocaust from the Greek words hollows means whole and kostos means burned was historically used to describe a sacrificial offering burned on an altar. Holocaust survivors are people who survived the persecution and attempted annihilation of the Jewish people by Nazi Germany. So those people who were Jewish, they had to suffer from sacrifice. Their, their lives were sacrificed at the altar and their lives were burned. And who were the Holocaust survivors? Those who survived the persecution somehow and attempted annihilation of the Jewish people by Nazi Germany. We all are aware of uh, the most discussed and the most famous uh, Annie Frank who, who had been the Holocaust victim. And she is known for her publication in her diary of Annie, in the diary of Annie Frank, where she had documented her sufferings, the miserable condition of her life. But unlike Annie Frank, the protagonist of the story, the narrator, the narrator is Margot Minko. She was she was the Holocaust survivor. Okay, who could who could arrest the persecution? Can you see Adolf Hitler and the Holocaust victims. Can you see children? How lives are sacrificed at the altar. They are burned. Now, how does the story the address relates to World War II? Mingle's short story does have direct connections to World War II and the aftermath that followed for those who survived it. That means the Holocaust survivors. The premise of the daughter who seeks to reclaim the memories of her departed mother is something that can connect to the survivors of the Second World War, who themselves had to endure a great deal of reconnection and attempts at rebuilding. Holocaust survivors are people who survived the persecution and attempted annihilation of the Jewish people by Nazi Germany and its allies in Europe and North Africa during the Holocaust both before and during World War II. So you can understand what were the after effects of World War II and how dangerous and how overpowering they were. Now, more broadly speaking, the term includes anyone who was discriminated against displaced or persecuted as a result of the policies and actions of the Nazis and their allies. The address by Marga Minko revolves around the theme of crisis that we as an individual encounter in our daily life. War brings destruction, pain and loss of lives which impact humans in various ways how we are going to read through the story. However, this story speaks about the narrator and mother's life, who, how they are disrupted due to war. So how war had quite a profound impact on the lives of the narrator and her mother. Now, the story is about the author's story, who is a Jew and returns to her native home post-war. After suffering many losses, she even loses her mother. Father, it is about how she handles the world alone after going through too much of pain. Moreover, we learn about the world's cruelty towards the oppressed. Upon suffering from further oppression, she realizes a lesson in a tough way. She comes to realize that nothing is kept in materialistic things and she gives everything up. 
Thus, it shows us how about human pain and self-actualization. Now students, what is the significance of an address? What is an address? An address is a place where a person or organization may be communicated with, isn't it? It's an address which helps us to locate a person. Where does the person stay? How can we communicate with the person? An address helps us in doing all these things and in, in establishing a communication with that person. Now, what is the story about? As I've already given you a brief outline of the story, it's all about the human predicament that follows the war. The story narrates how a daughter goes to her native place in Holland in search of her mother's belongings after the war. The address by Margo Mingo narrates the story of a lady who, after losing her entire family in the Holocaust, returns to the address in order to collect all her family's possessions that the author's mother had left with Mrs. Dolling, a non-Jewish lady. Please be particular with it. Mrs. Dolling, she was a non-Jewish lady. But the narrator, Margaminko, she was a Jewish lady. Okay. Now, she came to collect all her family's possessions which were given to her by her mother which were given to Mrs. Dolling, who was a non-Jewish lady, a lady of her acquaintance, before leaving her homeland. After the war was over, the narrator, the author, went to Mrs. Dolling's house to collect all her past possessions, but to her surprise, Mrs. Dolling refused to recognize her. In her second attempt, the author rings the doorbell of Mrs. Dolling's house, only to be welcomed by her daughter. Now, in her second attempt, who welcomed her? Her daughter. She offered her a cup of tea and asked her to wait for Mrs. Dolling. As the author observed the room, she saw that there are many things which belong to her, like the cups, other utensils of her mother. She also came across the tablecloth with burn marks on it. She left the house without waiting for Mrs. Dolling to return. Now let me give you a detailed explanation of the text. The address begins with a victim of war going back to her native place. In this case, it is Holland. She goes there to search for her mother's belongings after the war. Post-war, she goes to Mrs. Dolling. She is a lady of the narrator's mother's acquaintance and she was a non-Jewish lady. When she reaches her native place, means the narrator, she does not receive a warm welcome from Mrs. Dolling. She follows the address, house number 46 in Marconi Street. This is the address, house number 46 in Marconi Street. A woman opens the door and refuses to recognize the girl on the door. The author notices the woman wearing her mother's green knitted sweater. Thus, she became even surer that she was in the right place. Because as a daughter, she could never forget the mother's her mother's green knitted sweater, which Mrs. Dolling was using, was wearing. However, the woman did not deny not knowing her mother. Despite the author's resistance, the woman did not entertain her and close the door on her. So the Mrs. Dolling, the woman, she did not behave in a quite friendly way with the narrator. The author was going back when she starts thinking about the bygone days. She got the address from her mother years ago. After returning to her home post-war, because she was a Holocaust survivor. So after returning to her home post-war, she notices a lot of things missing from the place. Thus her mother gives her an address of Mrs. Darling. She learns that Mrs. Darling is an old acquaintance of her mother. Thus her mother handed over all their valuable possessions to Mrs. Darling to keep them safe. Because their life was very unpredictable, thus, after many years, the author thinks of going back to take their positions. Thus, after being told to go away by Mrs. Dolling on her visit, she goes back once again. On her second visit, 15-year-old daughter answers the door. The author told her about her wish. The author told whom? The 15-year-old daughter of Mrs. Dolling about her wish to meet her mother. So she comes again. The narrator comes again. The girl takes her in the house. 
To the author's surprise, she notices the room full of things her mother possessed. The room was not similar, but the things were all very similar. She started to feel so uncomfortable. She now had no desire to possess her mother's belongings, so this, this emotional turmoil made her all the more very uncomfortable because these all belong to her mother. She has a kind of deep emotional attachment with the mother's belongings, but she cannot possess them anymore. Thus, she leaves the home and thought of forgetting the address and the thought of ever getting those things back. To sum up, at the end of the story, we learn the intricate emotions of human life, like trust, hope and betrayal. Trust, which who has shown trust here in the story? the author's mother hope hope of getting them back once one day in her life and betrayal shown by mrs darling in not giving them their possessions back as well as the ill effects of war and everything cropped up only because of the war now mrs darling's characterization mrs darling is an important character of marva mingo's short story the address she is introduced to us as the mother of a 15-year-old daughter. Like her daughter, Mrs. Darling has a broad back. When the narrator rings the bell, Mrs. Darling appears wearing the green knitted cardigan of the narrator's mother. This is how she is presented to us. She is introduced to us. She was a neighbor of the narrator a long time ago. The narrator went to Mrs. Darling's house in Holland to fetch her belongings back. Now she faked complete ignorance when asked if she recognized the narrator. She was extremely unwilling to strike a polite and decent conversation with the narrator, isn't it? She intentionally did not recognize her. She chose convenience over etiquettes in inviting her inside the house. She knew it very well that this lady belongs to her old acquaintance. But she chose convenience over etiquette. She chose, she faked ignorance. She was very discourteous and impolite. And she was not honest. Our next character is Marga Minko, the narrator. Marga Minko is a Jewish girl who faced the pain, sufferings and losses, including the irreparable loss of her dear mother in war. She is a brave and courageous girl who faces the challenges of a lonely life after the end of the war. She is attached to her mother's things and after returning to her home city, she goes to Mrs. Darling to claim her mother's things back. But Mrs. Darling's cold, indifferent and discouraging behavior further depresses her. She had already suffered many losses, including the irreparable loss of her dear mother. Finally, she decides to leave her mother's things and forget them forever as the things will evoke her mother's memories more often and make her more miserable. So she just ran out from her house. From whose house? Mrs. Darling's house. Because she could not bear the pain. Finally, she accepted with resignation that these things are going to give her more deeper pain and will evoke her mother's memories more often. So let me just let them go. What are the human emotions portrayed here, students? First of all, the address by Marga Minko throws light on a multitude of human emotions. You have to understand this. Firstly, on her first visit to 46 Marconi Street, that is the address, the author was shown an intentional coldness by Mrs. Dorling in not recognizing her. This act of Mrs. Darling is enough to tell us that the author's mother was betrayed by Mrs. Darling. After being treated unpleasantly by Mrs. Darling on her very first visit to the house, the author developed an awful impression of Mrs. Darling. To her, she was a thief who had refused to recognize her as she did not want to return the positions that the author's mother had left behind. So she is left with emotional turmoil. On the one hand she knows, on one hand she knows that the, the, the belongings, they're all her possessions. They were all given by her mother. 
But on the other hand, she had to accept that Mrs. Darling will never return the possessions that the mother, author's mother had left behind. Right? On her second visit, the author was welcomed by Mrs. Darling's daughter, who, unlike her mother, asked the author to come in and even offered her a cup of tea. So see, there is a quite contrast between the daughter and her mother, Mrs. Darling's daughter and Mrs. Darling. Mrs. Darling showed faked an intentional coldness, faked ignorance on, on the face of the narrator, whereas Mrs. Darling's daughter, quite innocently, she offered her a cup of tea. So she showed polite gestures and courteous behavior to the narrator. The author, while running her eyes around the house, saw a few things her mother had left with Mrs. Darling. She also observed that Mrs. Darling's daughter loves those possessions quite dearly and is proud of possessing them. In the end, the author decides against taking her possessions along as she felt that all these possessions would remind her of her family members who had died during the course of the year. Students, the most important thing which oozes out from this text is the feeling of leaving everything behind because life has to move on. The story clearly brings to light the fact that holding on to the past can be an extremely painful exercise. The author, despite being attached to memories of her past, had the courage to leave them behind in order to make a fresh beginning. Now, the address by Marga Minko is indeed an inspiring story which sheds an adequate amount of light on the importance of letting things go. It further reiterates that both past and future are illusions and we all have with us is the present. So we have to live, we have to make the best use of the present. The past which is never going to come back and the future which we, ha we have not seen, they are all elusive. All we have with us is the present. The main theme of the story is the redemption of the past and moving on. It's about having the courage of leaving your things behind you. These things are the materialistic pleasures, material things which actually have no existence in our life. And realizing that it doesn't matter if your memories have a proof or not because they will linger in your memory and heart forever. Students, a striking feature of the story is the sheer ease with which the author has portrayed the multitude of emotions. This is very important. Right from betrayal to melancholy and everything in between. Now the story by Marga Mingo, this is Address, if she was a Dutch journalist, it reiterates the fact that dwelling in the past only ends up adding to the emotional turmoil a person might be going through in his or her life. So the story further brings to light that as soon as we accept everything and move on in life, the better we are bound to feel. Acceptance of something not only makes us feel better emotionally, it also helps us to concentrate on the opportunities that might come our way in the not so distant future because life has to move on. Thank you so much.